So sometimes when you do an uh, experiment, you want to take a look at what might have gone wrong. Sometimes your results just aren't what you expected them to be or they're not close to the right answer. And so this is what we call error analysis. We're going to take a look at what might have gone wrong and uh, maybe just discuss it a little bit. Things go wrong in lab all the time, but if you ignore them, that's not the right way to deal with errors. You got to talk about them. So there are two types of error that you need to be aware, aware of. One is experimental error. Experimental error is error that is inherent in the design or the instruments. Uh, it's something you can't avoid, uh, or maybe you don't even know that, that it's there when you do the experiment. The other type of error is human error. These are mistakes caused by improper technique or you're careless, you knock something over. Um, if you make human errors, the proper way to address that is to just do the experiment again and not make those same mistakes. Improve your knowledge, improve your technique so that you're not making the same human errors. We are not going to be interested in human errors. We're only going to be interested in experimental errors. Experimental errors are the errors that cannot be helped. Either the instruments aren't good enough or there's something in the design of the experiment that doesn't allow them uh, to go away. So only experimental errors are allowed when you do error analysis. Typically we take three. Pick three of the sources of error and you talk about not only what the error was, but what effect that error had on your results. And the effects are the more important part of this. It's easy to sort of say, well, this could have gone wrong, this could have gone wrong. But how did that affect your results? That's what we're really interested in. And you need to support your, your discussion of that with some math or some evidence as to how it would have affected your results. So here's an example. You perform a reaction with zinc, metal, and hydrochloric acid. And at the end of it, you don't get as much product as you should have gotten. You maybe looked it up or you calculated it and you should have gotten more than you did. So what are some sources of error? Well, human error, you knocked over the reaction beaker and maybe some of the product spilled out. Or you read the balance wrong. Or you accidentally spilled some of the acid and it didn't go into the beaker. These are all mistakes. These aren't really errors in the experiment. These are things that you did wrong, accidents or mistakes. You want to fix those? Do the reaction again and don't make those mistakes. We don't count those as errors. Okay? We're interested in things that you either couldn't have avoided or you didn't know about. For example, metals have an oxide coating on them. It's what protects them from reacting with the air. So zinc is going to have an oxide coating. And that means some of the zinc that was in that piece of zinc that you reacted wasn't really zinc anymore. It was zinc oxide. And that means it didn't react. And if it didn't react, it didn't produce some of the product. And that means that the mass of the product was lowered. See, I not only talked about the error, there was oxide coating on the zinc, but also what it did to my results. Some of the metal didn't react and it lowered the mass. Okay? There's not much I can do about that, but I have to talk about how it affects the results. So whenever you do a lab, you're going to pick out three things that could have gone wrong that were unavoidable or that you didn't know about at the time. And you're going to talk about not only what they were, but what did they do to your results. And that's error analysis.